Okay, good evening, my dear students. Welcome to Grade Up, India's biggest e-learning platform. So I welcome you all to this live session of the theory of machine. This class, the theory of machine that is damped vibration. <clears throat> okay, so very good evening, all of you. And I want everyone to please respond whether the audio and video is correct or is having a sync. Else, I will be switching off the video uh, so that the main priority is you should be understanding the subject. Okay. Yes, quickly respond. Very good evening, all of you guys. <clears throat> Very good evening. So, uh, in today's session, we'll be talking about uh, the damp vibration. So yesterday, we have uh, learned about how to find the uh, vibration, the natural uh, vibration of different uh, arrangements. Okay. Very good evening, all of you. <clears throat> So I welcome you all to this live session. Uh, good evening, Vignesh. Uh, good evening, uh, Vivek also. And I've seen Vivek has responded to yesterday's answer. Okay. Now it's okay, my dear friend, Vignesh. <clears throat> so today we'll be uh, talking about uh, the damp vibration. Yesterday we have talked about the natural vibration. And in that, we have discussed about uh, how to calculate uh, the uh, vibration. Don't worry, audio is clear, right? So don't worry, we'll be having a, without a video, we'll be having a discussion today without video because the main thing is I need everyone to please uh, understand this topic, okay? <clears throat> and won't be taking much of your time. <clears throat> okay, so I'll be telling you how to protect yourself <clears throat> Uh, from uh, the coronavirus because uh, for that you need to be having a hygienic routine and you need to sanitize your hands you need to wash your hands frequently so that uh, you're not uh, you're not infected with this deadly virus okay so it's a basic 12 steps to uh, wash your hands uh, you're having uh, first is you need to wet your hands second is apply soap third is rub hands palm to palm Th fourth is ra uh, lather the backs of your hands then scrub your hands. Uh, so these are the 12 basic steps so that you will be having uh, uh, an idea how to wash your hands. Okay. Uh, hello, Pridham. Vignesh, Pridham, a very, very good afternoon, all of you. Okay. So, uh, and I, I hope so you all know how to wash your hands. Uh, yes, I'll be uh, telling you the answer of yesterday's problem also. Uh, now, if I talk about uh, the deadly virus, if you are having any uh, any support, if you are having any doubt or technical queries or guidance, if you require, you definitely should reach out to this number, which is 9111239780468. Okay, so definitely you should reach uh, uh, on this number. This is very very important. If you are having any doubt or difficulty, uh, this is a government of uh, number given by the government of India. It's a toll free number, so definitely a team will be helping you out if you are having any difficulty. Okay, so you definitely have to prep smart and stay safe. Okay, so take classes on balancing, please. Uh, definitely, uh, I'll be making a schedule, not now, but after some uh, like after a few days, I'll be planning again uh, for more topics of theory of machines. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so let's introduce myself my name is Suraj Gopi uh, I have more than five years of teaching experience I have masters in thermal science and engineering I have mentored more than 5,000 students for gate ESC SSJ and uh, my area of expertise is uh, mechanics thermal and applied uh, industrial heat transfer and theory of machines okay fine so uh, good afternoon uh, good evening all of you now let let us start with the uh, yesterday's session. <clears throat> Yesterday I've given you one uh, problem so that you can uh, understand how to apply uh, the torque method because torque method is one of the most easy and most uh, very very important method for solving problem from the natural vibration. So let us uh, start the session by solving the yesterday's problem. Okay. So let us suppose we are having a, a, a spring having stiffness k. And this is a rod having mass m and length l. Okay, so this rod is having mass m and uh, length l. And you need to calculate what is the natural frequency of vibration. That means you have to calculate omega n. You have to calculate omega n. Fine. <clears throat> is that clear? Now, please tell me those who have uh, responded. Vivek Reddy uh, has uh, responded correctly. He is absolutely correct. 
पवन इज थिंक सर यू कवर फुल सिलेबस ऑफ वाइब्रेशन आई विल ट्राई आई विल ट्राई टू कवर मैक्सिम पोर्शन फाइन एंड इट्स योर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू प्लीज सॉल्व सम प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज इट्स नॉट uh it's very difficult to solve problems on this uh in this one hour uh, class so please uh, i will be telling you the concept you need to apply those concept in the problems so that you will be having a command on this subject now let us start with this today's session now <clears throat> let us let me deflect this with a theta deflection let us suppose the deflection is theta okay so i'm deflecting with an uh, angle uh, displacement of theta so if this is theta so we have mg g in this direction okay is that clear so md in mg in this direction so we'll be having a moment will be having a moment in this direction that will be mg into just remember the yesterday's concept now is this is from the center line so definitely this will be l by 2 this is center line the definitely this will be l by 2 okay this will be l by 2 is that clear so if this is l by 2 so this will be l by 2 sin theta i can uh, write this as instead of sin theta i can directly use theta because <coughs> okay is that correct so, so this mg l to theta next is uh, the inertia force inertia force definitely we having in this direction this is i theta double dot okay and will be having one spring force So the spring force will be acting in this this point in this direction. So what will be the moment about point O? If if I take the topmost point, the uh, the pin joint as point O, if I take this as point O. So tell me what will be the moment due to the spring about this point O? Quickly tell me. What will be the moment of uh, the spring force about the point O? So it will be k into l. Into l theta, is that clear? It will be because the deflection. What will be the deflection? Deflection will be in this direction. So this will be the deflection we will be having. So this will be the deflection. Okay. So we'll be having a spring force being acting in this direction. That will be is equal to. We'll be having a spring force that will be equal to s into l sine theta, s into l sine theta. Into L, is that clear? <clears throat> S into L sine theta into L. So I can uh, write this as S into yeah, exactly. I can directly write this as S L square theta. S L square theta. Okay. I can write this as L L square theta. So uh, now you need to compare. these three equations that is mg l by 2 theta uh, i am marking a tick mark i to, need to compare this equation you need to use uh, the inertia equation okay and the spring force equation okay so this is sl square theta so what will be our final expression that will be equal to i into i into theta double dot plus mg l by 2 into theta Plus plus s l square into theta s l square into theta is equal to zero. <clears throat> Fine, is that clear? Now, uh, just you need to rearrange uh, the equations. So that will be theta double dot. Just you need to now apply the basic condition. Theta double dot. Is equal to theta double dot plus m d l by two plus s l square by i into theta. Yes, definitely, Prince. I'll be explaining once again. <clears throat> Now, uh, students will be having how this l sine theta is coming. Don't worry. Look, when uh, the position is over here. what is the length of this if i draw over this point okay this is length l this is length l okay. so this is the new position so what will be the perpendiculars of this this is the spring force which will be in 
in this direction that will be k into the deflection this is the deflection we are having what is the length of this portion if i am using this as theta so this will be l sin theta so this will be k k or s anything you can use I, uh, some uh, sometimes i am using s sometimes using k so it's exactly same so this is l theta this distance so k into l sin theta into because this is moment so this is force what is the distance between these two this is l so into l so this from this you are getting a spring force or spring moment due to spring force moment due to spring is that clear you are getting moment due to spring now it's okay sprints please uh, tell me you now you have understood because that will give you my idea like you have understood pritham now okay so this will be l into because this is the deflection what is sin theta l sin theta is the deflection fine so l sin theta is deflection so l sin theta is deflection what is the moment about this point o this is the distance l so this is f or this is k into deflection this is l sin theta into the length l is that clear now we have uh, used this theta double dot is plus mg l by 2 plus s l square by i <coughs> Fine. Now, what is the next step? So, this omega n, how to get it omega n? Omega n is basically omega n is equal to under root of the complete term mg l by 2 plus s l square upon s l square by i. Okay. <clears throat> is that clear? Fine. So, mg l by 2 plus s l square by 2. Uh, by i. So if I again expand this equation, so omega n is equal to mg l by 2 plus k l square by i 0 because this is the moment of inertia of point about point 0. Okay, now what is what will be the value of i naught? Please, please tell me if this is the length. Okay. And this is your point O having length L. So tell me quickly what will be the moment of inertia? This is a rod having length L. What will be the moment of inertia of I naught above point O? Quickly tell me. This is I C G. This is I. O. So using parallel axis theorem. So you have to use parallel axis on how to calculate ICG will be what will be ICG quickly tell me ICG will be equal for a rod what is the moment of in center of gravity it will be ml square by 12 the mass of the rod ml square by 12 so what will be I I naught will be equal to I naught will be equal to. You have to use the parallax theorem. Okay. Is equal to m square by 12 plus ml square by 12 plus. Yes, exactly. It will be ml square by 3. Yes, very good. Uh, we are ready. You are correct. M L square by twelve plus. Just you need to add M L square by twelve plus M L square by four. Okay, use parallel axis theorem. I think it's talking very badly right now. So when you solve it, you will be getting uh, is equal to ml square by 3. This will be equal to ml square by 3. Is that clear? So your final expression comes out to be, your final expression comes out to be omega n is equal to under root of, clear? 
Now, what do we mean by vibration? Yes. So, if we have discussed uh, natural vibration yesterday, so today we will be discussing uh, vibration. I have divided this into two sessions. Okay, so damped vibration. What is damped vibration? We will be having, we'll be having mass, uh, your uh, stiffness of the spring, and also the dampers known as C. So, C is coefficient of exactly very good. So, C is coefficient of C is coefficient of damping. Okay, coefficient of damping. Uh, sir, the these concepts of vibration sufficient for aid, or is there any additional concept? Are there no? Uh, like if I talk about natural vibration, there are uh, methods, equilibrium method, which is also known as Dale Lambert's principle, uh, Dale Lambert's method. Second is your energy method. Third is your torque method. There is one more case that is called Rayleigh method. Okay, Rayleigh method is basically used when you're having a point mass and a spring system only. Clear? Fine. So. Today we'll be talking about the damped vibration in which we'll be talking about the coefficient of damping also. Is that clear? Now, what do you mean by damped system? We'll be having a friction. Yesterday I have told you with an example what is damped system. Damped system is basically when a body is, uh, yesterday I've given an example when a pendulum is swinging in water. Okay, so when a pendulum is swing, swinging in water, when a pendulum is swinging in a water, is basically known as a damped vibration because we'll be having friction. Friction will be associated with this. Okay, so in this case, when the friction is not equal to zero, that's known as damped system. And the, the symbol for the damping is this is basically the symbol for damping. <laughs> symbol for damping. Okay. Is that clear? Please tell me if you are having any doubt uh, in understanding symbol for damping. Periodic vibration of decreasing amplitude called damp vibration. Yes, exactly. Very good. <clears throat> because uh, in the previous case, friction was not there. So the amplitude of vibration will be decreasing in a very uh, long run. But if you are having a friction associated, what will happen? It will quickly come to its mean position. It will quickly come to its mean or zero position. Is that clear? It will be quickly coming to its mean or zero position fine now this is a symbol of uh, dampers uh, this is the symbol of a uh, dampers is that clear now uh, let us try to understand uh, uh, yes uh, we were ready lagging the video is not clear sir uh, now it's okay please tell me quickly Because it is very important for you guys to understand. Now it's okay, my dear friend. Okay. So now let us try to calculate what will be the equilibrium, what will be the equation of damp uh, system. Like yesterday we have discussed about for free uh, damping, your equation was x double dot for, uh, for natural damping or natural vibration for for natural vibration yesterday we have discussed about the natural vibration and in that case we have talked about the governing equation governing equation was what was governing equation it was x double dot x double dot plus omega n square x is equal to 0. So we have done this in the ESX class. So today we'll be uh, talking about the damped vibration. Okay. So in damped vibration will be having a spring force. We'll be having a damping force. What is damping force? Let me write over here. Your damping force will be equal to damping force is basically is equal to c into x dot okay c into x dot is a damping force that means the uh, coefficient of damping 
into the velocity is known as the damping force. Okay, where C is, where C? Where C is coefficient of damping. Where C is coefficient of damping. Is that clear? Coefficient of damping. Fine. So let us have. Uh, let us suppose this is the equilibrium position we are having. I have written for you guys so that uh, I won't be writing that much, so you will be understanding. So this is the equilibrium position. At equilibrium position, we'll be having a free body diagram. In K S, that is the spring force. This is the damping force. This is the inertia force. So if I write the equation, that will be m x double dot m x double dot plus c x dot plus kx kx is equal to 0 okay fine <clears throat> clear <clears throat> donald trump is saying sound is not clear Okay, so if so, it will be x double dot x double dot plus c by m into x dot plus kx is equal to zero. Clear. Is that clear? Because video is heavily lagging, I suppose. It's not um, sound is not clear. Pidam is saying. Okay, so x double dot plus c m by x dot plus k x is equal to zero. Let me rub everything and we write a fresh equation. So m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x. Plus kx is equal to 0. Okay. So x double dot plus c by m into x dot plus k by m into x. Is that clear? So this is the equation of this is the equation of damp system. This is the equation of damp system. Okay, fine. So I'm writing again. So it's not fine. So you have understood the equation of damp system. This is x double dot plus c m uh, c by m into x dot plus S by M into X is equal to zero is the equation of damped system. Clear? Let me go to uh, the solution of this. So when you solve this equation, because you need to solve uh, the equation which you are getting. So this will be X double dot plus C by M to X dot plus K X is equal to zero. You need to solve this equation. This is basically your second order differential equation. So when you solve it, your solution is basically this. This is the solution which we are having. So solution for the above equation is, is this. Solution is x is equal to a l one t plus b l t to the power alpha two t. Alpha is not equal to alpha one is not equal to alpha two. If alpha one is equal to alpha, in that case, your solution for the equation will be x is equal to a plus b t e to the power alpha t. Okay, and what is alpha 1 and alpha 2? Alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the roots of auxiliary equation. It's not rotos, it's basically roots of root of auxiliary equation AE. <clears throat> A 
I will try Raj Gopal. I will try to change the timing. Don't worry. Fine. <clears throat> Let me check with my team. Is that possible to take this session again? Uh, because there is huge lagging going on. So alpha one and alpha two, the roots are basically uh, these are the roots of the auxiliary equation. So if I want to calculate the auxiliary equation, that will be alpha square. That will be alpha square plus c by m into alpha plus k by m okay plus k by m is equal to 0 clear so what will be the uh, what will be the uh, uh, value of alpha you can bring is pure matrix minus b plus minus under root b square plus 4ac so minus c by m minus under root b square, that is c by m whole square b square minus 4ac That will be four into omega n square, fine? Right? Because this is basically omega n square. <clears throat> Clear? Upon two a, upon two a, the, the the coefficient of a is one. Clear? So I can rewrite this equation as alpha is equal to Sir, uh, does the c by m ratio have any specific name? Yes, we have a specific name. I'll be telling you. It's basically your degree of dampness. I'll be telling you what is degree of dampness. Alpha one and two is equal to minus c minus c by two m minus c by two m plus minus under root c by two m. Whole square minus omega n square. Okay, so I've taken the two inside. This is omega n square. Is that clear? So omega n square. <coughs> now, uh, what is basically now? Alpha is having two values: alpha one and alpha two. These are the two values of alpha. One will be plus, another will be minus. So, what is basically your C by 2m. This basically this component, the C by 2 component, is basically responsible for the loss in kinetic energy. Okay, so this component C by 2m is 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 telling you about the loss in kinetic energy, and omega n is related to about the the gain or storing of the potential energy. Is it clear? Fine. So if I write again, alpha comma 2 is equal to minus C. By two m plus minus plus minus under root c by two m c by two m whole square minus omega n. Okay, so this basically is responsible for the loss of kinetic energy loss in Kinetic energy, and this is responsible for the storing of storing of energy. Because omega is associated with k. What is k? It is your shiftness, and shiftness is associated with the potential energy. Okay, fine. And C by two uh, m, uh, it's basically friction. So friction always oppose the motion, the movement of the body. So it will be associated with the loss in kinetic energy. Now there's a one new ratio now. You understand? There's a ratio which is c by 2m, c by 2m divided by omega n whole square. Whole square is known as degree of dampness. It's known as degree of dampness. Okay, so it's basically known as degree of dampness. And the under root of this, the under root or square root of the above term. The square root of the above term is known as very important factor that is called damping factor. That is c by two m whole square upon omega n square. This is called damping factor. Okay. So this is called damping factor. That means and all. Also noted as zeta. This is known as zeta. <clears throat> okay, 
Is that clear? So I can write directly zeta is equal to zeta is equal to c by 2m c by 2m upon k by m k by m we need to evaluate the equation okay k by m this whole square and under ultimately your expression comes out to be zeta is equal to c by 2 the root k very very important and i can also write this equation as 2 zeta 2 zeta into omega n 2 zeta into omega n is equal to c by m fine so 2 c by m i can replace this as uh, 2 zeta into omega n now just now we have understood the final expression of the damped system that is x double dot x double dot plus c by m c by m into x dot c by m into x dot plus omega n square into x omega n square into x is equal to 0 instead of c by m i can write this as x double dot this is 2 z omega sorry 2 zeta omega n uh pritham is saying again tell it's just need to place this value if, if i put a uh, zeta is equal to just put the zeta value 2 by c by 2 under root k by m and omega n value as under root k by m if i put omega n is equal to under root k by m you'll be getting c by m so c by m is, is equal to 2 zeta omega n. is that clear fine <clears throat> so i can write this as 2 zeta omega n 2 zeta omega n omega n square omega n square into x equal to 0 fine so yes uh, sir will you arrange another session for this the video is lagging uh, fine so let me check uh, let me ask with my team whether it's possible uh, to have another session <coughs> Just we need to calculate uh, the final expression. So in this case, your x will be equal to again. Your x is is equal to a e to the power alpha one into t plus b e to the power alpha two into t when alpha one is not equal to alpha two. And also I can write this as x is equal to a plus b into t. This is the root of the equation e to the power alpha t if alpha is equal to alpha is equal to alpha. Okay. So in that case, uh, if this is the case, then the roots of this equation will be alpha 1 2 is equal to minus zeta plus minus zeta square minus 1 under root omega n under root omega n is that clear this is very important because from this we'll be having a discussion of what are the different types of damping we'll be having three types of damping so it's very important to you need to understand fine so uh, alpha 1 2 is equal to minus zeta plus minus zeta square minus uh, 1 into omega n so there is three possibilities there is three possibilities like zeta can be zeta can be greater than one your zeta can be greater than one okay zeta can be equal to one and zeta can be less than one so when zeta is greater than one this is basically known as please tell me what will be the condition if zeta 
is greater than 1 that means your damping coefficient or damping ratio is greater than 1 what will be the ratio of this called quickly <clears throat> what will the ratio of the uh, what will the damping uh, if if your damping factor is greater than 1 in that case what will be the condition called this is basically called over damped condition this is really called over damped condition okay this is called over damped condition and zeta condition typically typically damped condition okay fine and when zeta is less than this is called under damped this is called under damped clear this is called under damped also known as a uh, viscous damping viscous damping <clears throat> video is paused don't know why please respond uh, whether you are able to see or not quickly okay so let me uh, let let me do one thing let me uh, wrap up this right now okay so let me wrap up this right now so we'll be continuing this topic uh, huge fluctuation is going on uh, in in the uh, network so let me wind up this quickly i'll be having a discussion again on this topic uh, of the over damped critically damped and under damped condition okay fine is that clear fine so there are three uh, categories of damping when uh, zeta is greater than 1 that is called over damped when zeta is equal to 1 that is called critically damped and when zeta is less than 1 that is called under damped right? also known as viscous damping clear fine so let me uh, wind up this at this moment uh, we will be continuing this topic again uh, in tomorrow session okay so uh, let me conclude the session right now because uh, there is huge video lagging going on so don't worry i'll be stopping the session right now over here okay so guys thank you uh, you can prep smart with us uh, there's a sale going on 40 percent off this is only few hours left for our batch 2 batch 2 for mechanical vision 2021 course for esc and gate so definitely you can opt for this uh, because uh, very rarely uh, uh, we are giving a flat off on for all the categories so there is no uh, there is no criteria for getting 40% off. So definitely you can opt for this 40% flat off. You can go for this uh, batch two in mechanical engineering. Okay. So this is about the Vision 2021 course and about this 50% scholarship. You can avail. Uh, <clears throat> we can see, sir. Okay. You can see right now. Fine. If you can see, I can continue with my lectures. Okay, so don't worry. If we are having any difficulty, we'll be continuing this. What is this for us? Uh, which one? This is basically uh, for ESC and GATE. The course complete one and a half years course for ESC and GATE. So, uh, fine. It's a flat 40% off for all the aspirants for who are opting for this batch on MRP. Fine. So, it's a very good opportunity. You can go for this. And if I talk about uh, scholarship, 50% off uh, is there for odd gale gate qualified student for 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, for IT and IT government BTEC students and ESC plane qualified, uh, you are having for all the criteria, we are having 50% off. Okay. Fine. And for more info, just you can uh, call and